We are actually going to be a part of a nation building exercise in a very meaningful manner. Very fascinated about this whole intersection of AI and now the physical world. Uh, people have started using word called physical AI. If you step back and see the larger picture over there, I think uh, there's a lot of interesting opportunity for us to marry the two. Welcome to Up Close. This is part of our Road to Tech Spark series where we spotlight the stories, ideas, and innovations leading up to your story's flagship startup tech conference. Yulu is one of the most exciting brands in India today because it sits at the intersection of mobility, technology, and social purpose. Beneath its brightly colored bikes lies a deep AI and technology backbone that is quietly powering India's boldest urban transformations. How do you see Yulu shaping the future of mobility and employment in India today and in the next few years? We started Yulu in 2017. The whole idea of uh, traffic should be reduced or air should be cleaner. That's what motivated us, bunch of us, to start the journey. And while COVID was a disaster for, for the world, but it gave us this new use case where thousands of people were looking for a vehicle so that they can deliver goods and they can earn some money. With some hesitation in the beginning, we were like, okay, this use case is worth solving. And then we adopted creating livelihood as a part of our mission, along with solving for air pollution and traffic. And if you look at Yulu's journey now, we are so proud that we are one of the only few platforms globally which is solving mobility uh, and the problem of last mile logistic with a very technology driven methodology. And we are also creating a dignified jobs for many people. You know, I wanted to now touch upon the whole AI bit, right? Because uh, that's the buzzword and uh, we have tech sparks which where we are looking uh, at 2030 Bharat uh, being powered by AI. Can you unpack sort of how AI is powering Yulu from this whole perspective of fleet management, uh, from predictive maintenance, uh, from your rider personalization, and how has it been a part of creating this whole economic shift for partners? Yulu means simple. Right. So for us, simplifying the experience for our consumer is at the core as a, as a DNA. And AI now it is a buzzword. Any layman can talk about AI. But from day one, we knew the power of machine learning and AI. If you're talking about, let's say, running a fleet of 100 bikes, it's super easy. You don't need too much of technology. But when thinking of building this business model for millions of vehicles, that's where the real usage of technology comes into picture. So we created machine learning algorithms so that we know that this person who is at this particular point at this time of the day, we are able to predict that this person will require battery swapping near this area in 15 minutes from now. And imagine the entire algorithm of battery charging, swapping in the way we are able to manage the demand and supply is just revolving around that. So when someone comes to our battery swapping station, gets the battery swapping done in one minute, a lot of AI has gone underneath. Now coming to the bike, which is always learning, always trying to understand that what can go wrong. So there's a lot of work we have done on the predictive maintenance. So rather than waiting for the, the, the brake to go wrong or the something component to go wrong, we said, no, we cannot afford that. We'll rather take it away before this whole component is breaking. Now, interesting part is, if you just use a, a cookie cutter approach, you say, okay, I will just replace this shock absorber in 10,000 kilometers for all the bikes, for all the cities. Then you are actually leaving a lot of the life left on the table. AI is, is our only savior to make sure that we get the best out of that particular component and not causing a pain to the consumer in the form of a downtime. We now actually take uh, 200 data points per bike per 100 milliseconds. So that's the magnitude of first party data what we are capturing at the bike level, which has got multiple sensor and then we know the history geography of everything. 
This whole thing is also going to our OEM partners, which is Bajaj. So every version of Yulu is better than the earlier version. And we have the 30 versions wow. in our seven years journey. AI is also a new technology. Correct. There's been so much, uh, so many different paths to uh, understanding AI. What's been the effort like? For Yulu from day one, our ability to predict the demand and hence shape up our supply was the kind of a table stake, if not like most important thing we had to do back then. Things have evolved. The recent work which we have done on the predictive maintenance is actually increasing our user NPS and decreasing our overall repair and maintenance time. So things have evolved, but to be honest, from very early on in this game, this was something which we had to do. What makes you confident that India and Yulu's AI-led model can succeed where others haven't? Even if you talk about countries similar to India, not too far, let's say Vietnam. Vietnam has, by the way, 70% vehicle ownership. Yes. How much India is? 15%. My One God. five, that's it. So we saw that how things have been evolving, at least the context of our country. If you ask me, the headroom what we have got in terms of what Yulu could be and the size of Yulu could be, the numbers are actually far, far, far larger. The good part is we are able, able to get to a profitable business model state at such a small volume, which talks a volume about what innovation we have done, be it a frugal bike, be it our ability to run operations very profitably. And imagine then when we are able to scale on this backbone, what type of goodness we have been creating. We are seeing a category being created on the back of our mobility network. If we make it bigger, the business model will only go, this is a very, very virtuous cycle for quick commerce as well as for Yulu. So if I put 100,000 vehicles in no time, I know there'll be companies and, and people who will be lapping it up. So we have got that now flywheel effect. So I'm not worried about any number. It is rather our ability to run that business same way with the same profitability metrics. And that's where the role of technology comes into picture. That's where the hard work we have done over the last seven years will basically keep us going and keep us, uh, you know, running. Now, as Indian cities expand, how do you see Yulu shaping the way we design mobility, jobs, and the urban life in the next decade? So, if you look at the larger India story, I believe there are two very large themes. First theme is we all know that our country is running on a digital infrastructure. So, be it Aadhaar, the entire mobile internet, everything. So, that is a foundation number or pillar number one. The pillar number two is the green growth. So we have to be very, very mindful that when we are now looking at 2030 and beyond, we are looking at these two themes, technology for billion people and then green growth. Yulu interestingly sits at the intersection of the two. We are, our business model is possible because we are running on a digital rail. Otherwise we cannot scale this business. We believe when a lot of consumption increases, a lot of it will be at home, be it service or product. And we are enabling all of that movement to be green and efficient and affordable at the same time. And uh, we believe that with EV, uh, there's a long haul, electric trucks and hydrogen trucks and whatnot will happen. But within the city where the consumption pattern also, also change, we have a role to play. So we are actually going to be a part of a nation building exercise in a very meaningful manner. You know, if we were to sit down and do this interview again in 2030, what is the vision that you would like to see for Yulu? And how do you see AI sort of balancing the automation and empowerment by 2030? When you are building something new, it does not happen like quickly. Right. So the key here is the patience and the grit and the perseverance, which I sometimes feel that you know some of my fellow entrepreneur friends they probably they could have done like some really amazing work but just because they did not have patience they, they sometimes took a shortcut which was not good sometimes they gave up at least in our case we have been very clear from day one that this problem is first of all uh, not easy so you have to be very very determined uh, people ask us who are your competition we said none because no one had that kind of patience to be on, on, the, on the track and, and slog and build something. So patience has been actually one of our key traits. Second thing is uh, whatever does not exist 
we have no fear of building it that is another thing so back then no electric bike was available battery system infrastructure policy customer habit <laughs> we said okay we'll build all of that so we come to that phase and uh, we saw a lot of problems now talking about next 5 years i clearly see a part of our 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 dream when we started off that can we see more electric vehicles can we see far more silent city people on us is great great creating lot of noise so we don't want that we want to see air quality getting really really better we want to see that we have empowered if not everyone half of all the small commute in the city uh with our technology and i believe uh, we have a real shot at that people ask me what what else do you need to be now we are not set we just need to get lot of non dilutive capital and grow the business we know what to do now so i think in next 5 years you will see far more yulu or yulu powered vehicles or technology in some shape or form i am also very fascinated about this whole intersection of ai and now the physical world uh, people have started using word called physical ai if you step back and see the larger picture over there i think uh, there is a lot of interesting opportunity for us to marry the two we're talking about robotics but our bikes has a wheel for forever no why this vehicle cannot think like a robot right. cannot become a robot enabling my gig worker to do his or her job uh, far more efficiently there are some interesting thoughts uh, we are actually going to work uh, uh, in future but thesis wise this computer vision uh, ai robotics i think that's where a lot of interesting work is happening and i see no reason for us to not get substantial product innovation around that in our business model so i'm excited about that what a fantastic thought you know pick up a hard problem and solve with a purpose thank you so much it was a pleasure talking to you same here thank you thank very you. much Today Yulu isn't just building an electric mobility company it's building a blueprint for how technology sustainability and social impact can come together to transform urban India as we count down to tech sparks stories like Yulu remind us why the future of India's growth will be defined by entrepreneurs who dare to reimagine reinvent and rebuild at scale thank you for watching